Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is the last day marking the activities. Back in the 10th anniversary of City Hope International Church. This day was preceded by our destiny teaching and miraculous revival. I said, oh, we have a slogan, and I want you to repeat after me. This is the protocol of the anniversary celebration. I am well structured by the Holy Spirit. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Liberia and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Liberia, Dr. George Manawia. Jacob, 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to be in His presence. Hallelujah. If you have a Bible with you, please come with me in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Hallelujah. If you are there, say amen. Deuteronomy 6, 5, 6. Let me read up. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Verse And this word which I command you today will be in your heart. Hallelujah. And what is that command? Hallelujah. That command is to choose with him all their pain and in the process to deny all unsupposed deity. Hallelujah.
song and we produce to God us. A man of God. Not just a man of God. But I'm ordained and a poor man of God. It's not just an ordained and called man of God, he's, he's a voice in nation Liberia. He's not one of those that have a tradition Sunday service. He has taken the gospel out to the Liberian people and the outdoor program is called Wonders Encounter. It is held once every year. Yes. He was learning at the school of God that she took a lot you from today. Your life is still sweet. Just end up with smile. On any favor shall be the catapultion of your love. Nothing should stop you. That will be most important. What are our last things? You shall see. Where is our last step? You shall step.
that you are great. Your greatness is not meant to contain, it's meant to be released. Give me for a was it? And I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all from the of the eye be blessed. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. I told you to draw quickly and then I will not get out. Genesis chapter 22, verse number 1. And it came to pass after these things that God tempted. I do I prefer the word tested. Who have the Bible? Anybody have the Bible, that translation? I use the word tested and tempted. I do I use the word tested more than tempted. Because in actuality, God does not tempt, God tests. That a new King James. So for the better statement to understand what is right there, sometimes let God test them. Everybody shout in the house, say God test them. One more time, say it better, say God test them. There have been no nation on earth, no church on earth, no family on earth, no husband on earth, no boy or girl on earth that God has never tested before yesterday. Yes. That you all have to face it. God needs to come back to have that way. The rate is 7 million. How many are you? As there's 900,000 million. The rate in Nigeria. Your future is never closed, it's always here, it's 
That's why Paul would leave the future in the distance and get you in the distance to see if you can get there. Hear the scenario and hear the miscarriage and hear the bad news from many Liberians and many people in the world. Many people have seen their future, but they have never entered their future. Because the future is always in the distance. And he said, when he said, don't stay here. Somebody had this one. He said, stay here. Stay here. I want to show you that little eye shot. I said, you, stay here. You stay here. I'm going to the next level. Tell him, tell him. I said, you, stay here. <laughs> Put your hands up. You are coming to you. I said, you, stay here. Stay here. If you want to go, I'm going to go. Come on, stay here. <laughs> stay here with the donkey. Because if you don't tell you, you are there to take out the donkey. Stay with the donkey. My eye in the ball. Go over there. We will worship the Lord. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Push it around, let's go. And then Brother took the room for the brother off from the place. You know, his son, I use the name, he didn't stop. Kept the fire every night and as, as two of them went on together. Push it, push it. They get to the picture here. And I just spoke unto, and I just spoke up and said unto this, this father of Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire of the womb has seen. As he said, but where is the lamb for the grand ceremony? I see the promises, but where are the results? And Abraham answered, My God. My God. Abraham answered. Someone had to say, My God. Say, My God. Someone said that to say, My God. My God shall provide the lamb for the grand offering. My son and the two of them went up. I want to speak on the thing I entitled the seventh step to greatness. The seventh step to greatness. Seven step. And I'll tell you this afternoon. I don't care your education background, educated or not, informed or not, deformed, poor or rich. If you can take this seventh step, the hour I will give you, I can see greatness coming out of you. Before coming to service, just for the benefit of standing before someone at the final minutes of the orator of English. I will try to find out what is the definition of it. For example, the son of the show up to the Lord and I tell him, and no Henry Oxford, no new dictionary could really give me a satisfactory answer of what is greatness. There's only one dictionary, my brother, I have, which is the Bible. Yeah. Because people have not understood what greatness is. Yeah. Outside the Bible, greatness must start from your house. You must come from the work of Your father should be educated. Yeah. You should be someone who has connection of the But outside the Bible, the what people think, but inside the Bible, God will take a table from the bush yeah. and make it a king yeah. in the house. Yeah. God will take a killer from the bush and make it a deliverer. No time there. So, true definition of greatness does not come from the visionaries of men. They come from the world of God. What is greatness? What is greatness? Everybody wants to be great. Nobody goes with their child and asks the boy, hey, Gino, when you grow up, what do you want to become? And he thinks I want to become a failure. All the things I want to become a zoom. The first thing I tell you is this now, I want to become a lawyer. Papa, I want to become a doctor. Papa, I want to be the president of this country. When you can't become a president outside the true definition of greatness, there are seven steps. I'm getting your mind now. Seven steps. That probably before you get 40 or 50 or 60 years, you never heard it. When you have the opportunity this morning and this afternoon to hear and the pen and the person will say, Number one step of greatness, submission. No man become great until you learn how to submit. The problem in nature, my period, is our problem is we don't know how to submit. Everyone become a president, and you know they did not submit that before becoming anything in this society. Life is not about what you become, it's what you came from before becoming. Amen. The first thing that you must learn to be a great man, 
You're going to lean out to save it. Let's go. That is why you see men where men that were nothing, they will be a contact into something that courage of the change. I remember at the dedication, so let me start small, at the dedication of the of the theater, when Bertube invited me and my wife there, we ate from the same bath, from the same hall. And I was saying in my soul, deep down in myself, as I eat the back of the fear, when the security asked me, because I know my limitation, I don't care what I hear, I don't care what grace I've done, I know my limitation in life. When I put my hand in the back of the I thought something two, three times before I put my hand, because I knew that it is supposed to be so. We and the people are eating from the sea back on there. You must understand that your greatness is not in your power, it's in your submission. Push. 
Which relationships you are making? Let me advise you that I want to tell you. When life is teaching your destiny, know who to stay the company of. I want to say this to somebody. Not because they started with you, they must end with you. No, no, no. Life will never smile. You need to separate yourself from the past girlfriend and the present girlfriend. As a word. I know men that stay happy in relationship with their wives, happy in relationship with their girlfriend, but they are not left their past. They don't know the skill of separation. The master key for every good leader is the ability to separate yourself. I have come to understand the life and in ministry and in leadership. I have a degree in strategic leadership. The more you become familiar, you lose your respect. Sometimes, by intentional doing, you stay away from Oh, sure. 
the industrial organization. Let me show you the water center. Let me show you a custom museum. When you go to the airport, you see the lady in that level, tapping the letter, a quarter. Why you can pronounce it? You can't pronounce it. You are the cause in your mouth. That grandma calls the cause in you. They want to know about you, but they're waiting there. A quarter. What is your own? To the point that we have left our nativeness of life, we want to become a American woman now. Anybody here? 
And some of them are not at their land. I said, why are you bringing me a miracle? You've led me into a one group of that you can't pay for. You survived what uncle said. Some of you led your full stay. You ride a car and you are not bored. The uncle said, can they for you? Somebody stop 
switch. When I say your God, you shall switch. Your God, your homes, the government, the relationships, the leadership, your business, your church, your church.
comme ça, ça. Elle s'est pas fait, non. 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 Elle s'est pas fait,
to our Father in heaven for the great things he has done. For you, for me, and for all of us. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate the founding pastor of Sede Hope, Prophet Dr. Ezekiel Lee Rockman, and all the members of this church, of this occasion, of the celebration of the 10th anniversary of the founding. You have come a mighty long way since the humble beginnings. Congratulations are due to you today because when you look back to where the Lord has led you from, you can only praise Him and say, Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. May your name be glorified and now forevermore. To you, the congregation. I want to tell you that as much as you have been the beneficiary of the good leadership and vision of your pastor, he did not and would not have brought you through these past 10 years alone. He could not have done it without God's divine help and aspiration. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. It is the strength of God that made your growth possible. Therefore, it is to God that the credit and gratitude due. For without Him, we cannot accomplish nothing. Any progress you have made, any success you have achieved has been given to you by God to bring glory to Him. I reiterate, any progress you may have made, any success you may achieve is given to you by God. Allow it to yourself so that you can make it known to declare his glory. My fellow Christians, glory to God is not a matter of choice. It is not an option. It is an instruction and a direction. In 1 Chronicles 16.28, the command is clear, give glory unto the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 10.31, it is written that whosoever or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. should be for the glory of God. Yeah. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, whatsoever you do,
Je m'en fais comme elle était hier, elle s'est le home church. The one basic thing, giving God his glory. There is no better way to begin your second decade of existence than to recommit yourselves to that very same basic thing. We must continue to remain committed to be a church that is set apart for the glory of God. You must have a single goal, the one single motive, the one single purpose, the one single objective in mind. And that is to glorify God Himself. To many of us feel that it is all about us. Too many in the world think that the world revolves around us. It is all me and mine. My needs, my wants, my job, my feet, my fault. But let me tell you a story. Up until 450 years ago, everybody believed that the universe and the sun and the planet revolved around the earth. Then in 1543, Copernicus told them that the earth was in the center of the universe. 50 years later, Galileo said that the planet revolved around the sun. People were so opposed to that idea that they threw Galileo in prison, kicked him out of the church. The very idea that we were in the center of the universe was unthinkable. Well, let me tell you, my friends, the world doesn't revolve around you or me. God's priority is in your comfort. God's happiness or God's pleasure is not your comfort. God's priority is that he receive all the honor and glory. And everything that God does is for us to give him the glory. This doesn't mean that God has an ego problem. If you or I did everything we do for the purpose of receiving honor and glory, we will be considered arrogant, egotistical, conceited, and pompous. But God doesn't do anything so His glory will be revealed for His own good. God wants His glory revealed in everything that happens. But our good. So we cannot only witness his glory, but to be a witness of his glory. God wants us to see his glory. So we can reflect into the rest of the world. We are to be the moon. The moon doesn't have any lights of its own. It reflects the light of the sun. We are to be suns reflectors. And reflect the word of God that He displayed for us in everything He does. Second Chronicle 318. That we can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Him and reflect His glory in the home. Fellow Christians, as you go about the everyday lives, 
why involved in work, sports, music, and every day I tell you, are you remembering who gave you the talent to do so? It is God. And you should give him his glory. Even in hard times. Be a blessing of every kind. You must seize the opportunity to glorify him and honor him because he puts you through the fire so that you can know he is God. People say the hope. I am honored to celebrate the day with you. Let me remind you of the message of the angels of the hillside in Bethlehem. Who cries out, glory be to God in the highest. Let me call upon this beautiful choir to help me sing this song, but I'm going to sing it for the Father of Man. Glory be to the Lord in the highest.
the members of this great and powerful ministry that God has ordained. We have come to say a very big thank you to every one of you who told you your time to be here to celebrate our 10th anniversary with us today. We say God bless you. Hallelujah. Your presence here will not be in vain, but you shall go by faith in the name of Jesus. God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. And we say to God, be all the glory for great things he has done for us. And greater things he will continue to do for us as a church and for nation Liberia and his people. Thank you so much. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus, we will.